Okay, question 11 from homework 11. Um, we're going to walk through this one nice and slowly. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time that uh, the answer that I come up with at the end from my height is a little bit different from what the answer that WebAssign came up with. But because there are so many different ways to round these things and so many different ways your calculators can spit out answers, WebAssign actually has a little bit of leeway built into it. So if you put in the answer that I did, you will get the correct answer for it. You don't have to, I know it shows here that the answer is 3.32. The answer I come up with in the, ed with in the end is 3.33. That's good enough for WebAssign for the rounding. So just a, just a heads up that it might not be exactly the same, but it'll be good enough. All right, so we've got a can of beef stew and we need to know uh, the radius and height of a container uh, if it has a capacity of 29 cubic inches and is constructed using the least amount of metal. So first we need a picture. We don't have a picture here. Let's make a picture. I've got a can. It's got a top, it's got a bottom, and it's got sides. The top and bottom are both circles that have the same radius, and the side kind of turns into this, uh, this rectangular shape. Just imagine if you cut open the side of a can and rolled it out, it would just be a flat rectangle and the rectangle, it would have the height of the can, and then the length of it is because it's running around the circumference of these circles, the length of it's actually the circumference of the circles. So we've got basically here a picture of the can and a picture of the pieces of the can. And the pieces of the can are what we need to figure out how much metal we're working with, how much material we have. So how much material do we need? Well, we need the top and the bottom of the can, that's the area of a circle, and there are two of them, so it's pi r squared plus pi r squared. Then we need to add to that the side of the can, which we said before, that was the circumference of those circles or times the height. Yep, circumference times height, well that's 2 pi r, that's the formula for, bleh, the formula for circumference, times h, the height of our can. So if I add those two together, I get 2 pi r h plus pi r squared plus pi r squared and if I simplify that, I've got 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. The next thing we want to do is get rid of that h. It's kind of a sore thing going on here, and we actually don't need it because we want our function in terms of r. We want the only thing that we need to worry about is how we change the radius of those circles. So let's get rid of h. We can do that because we have a formula for volume. We know that the volume of the can is going to be basically the base times the height, so the area of the base times the height. So we've got pi r squared times h equals 29. 29 is what they gave us up at the beginning of the problem. So if I rewrite that in terms of h, I have h equals 29 over pi r squared. So now, wherever I see h in my formula, which is only one place, I can replace it with this 29 over pi r squared, and I don't have an h in the formula anymore. So let's do that. That gives us our function for materials. This is uh, what we found up here. This guy right here, this 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And I'm just going to plug in this formula that we found here for this, uh, when we reduced h, we got it to be this. I'm just going to plug that in. So that gives me 2 pi r 29 over pi r squared, that's where the h used to be, plus 2 pi r squared. And if I simplify that, I can actually cancel out a pi and an r in the denominator, so that gives me 2 times 29 over r plus 2 pi r squared, and if I simplify that further, I get 58 over r plus 2 pi r squared. So that's the function that we have to work with for our material. That's our material in terms of the radius of the top and bottom of the can. All right, so we need to find the derivative because we're trying to optimize this. So let's rewrite it. We had up here, we had an r in the denominator. Let's bring it up and make it a negative exponent because it's easier to work with when we're taking the derivative. So my derivative is going to be negative 58 because I multiplied times that negative exponent times r to the negative two. Subtract one from your exponent. I know sometimes it's tempting to change that to uh, to just get rid of that exponent altogether, but negative one minus one is negative two. All right, plus two times two is four, pi r to the first power because we subtracted one from two. And that gives us, when we rewrite it, we get negative 58 r over r squared plus 
4 pi r. So we just took the derivative of what we found here. Now we need to set that equal to 0. Technically, we also need to figure out where it doesn't exist, but where this function doesn't exist is where the radius equals 0. And if the radius equals 0, we don't have a top or bottom of a can. So it just doesn't make sense, so we're not even going to look at that. You do have to think about it, but because you've got just under an hour to solve this, we're not going to take the time to do that. I'm just going to tell you that the only place it doesn't exist, it doesn't make sense as a can, so we're not going to worry about it. So let's set this equal to 0. Negative 58 r over r squared plus 4 pi r equals 0. Let's multiply both sides by r squared to get that r squared out of the denominator here. So I'm going to multiply this times r squared, the whole thing. You can't just multiply the fraction. You have to multiply the whole thing times r squared equals 0 times r squared. Well, that's going to give us negative 58, because we got rid of the r squared in the denominator, uh, plus 4 pi r cubed. You had to multiply that, and so when you multiply this r here by the r squared, you got r cubed. And 0 times r squared is the same as 0 times anything. It's 0. Simplify, 4 r cubed equals 58, r cubed equals 58, or 4 pi r cubed equals 58 r cubed equals 58 over 4 pi. That means r equals the cubed root of 58 over 4 pi. When you are entering this into your calculator, if you're not sure how to do it, you need to, if you have the calculator that most of you have, the, uh, the TIX something 32 or something like that, um, what you want to do is enter 3 and then use the second sign to get the, you've got a square root sign that has an x by it, use the second key to get that. So 3, and then that square root with an x over it, and then in parentheses, 58 over, and put 4 pi in another set of parentheses. And you're going to come up with a decimal that's going to look something like this. This 1.6649, blah, 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 and that is our radius. So if we plug that into our formula for height, we're going to be able to figure out what our height is. Our formula for height was 29 over pi r squared. I'm going to plug in my radius. Um, I actually left out some numbers there, but I plug in my radius, plug that into the calculator. Again, be careful with parentheses. Make sure the entire denominator is in parentheses when you plug it into your calculator. And you're going to get something like 3.32993, blah, 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 blah. Next, we have to round. If we round our radius, we get 1.66. If we round our height, in this case, we got 3.32. And like I told you at the beginning of the video, it looks like WebAssign's looking for, or if we round, <laughs> let's get back down here, we get 3.33. WebAssign's looking for 3.32, but WebAssign realizes that there are a lot of things that could have happened while you were rounding this. So it's going to have a little bit of flexibility, and it would actually take 3.33 as a correct answer. All right, hope that helps. Make sure that you download the PDF so that you can follow along while you're working out your own question. And uh, hopefully this makes it to you in time.